All praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Akhakudash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom salutations to the hopeful elect that's fighting a good fight of faith and truth and sincerity and wholeheartedly. Shalom to the Akwak, which is the women believers. Shalom to you. All praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. And it's time for our Lord to work. And we're approaching that time that our Lord is going to work. So it says, show new signs, make other strange wonders, glorify your hand and your right arm, Yahweh Shai, that they may set forth your wondrous works. See, we've been in captivity for so long, oppressed, beat down, downtrodden. And these nations just been able to, you know, do what the hell that they want to do for the most part. See, you have touched the apple of the Lord's eye, so you will pay. Nobody gets away. Everybody reap what they what they sow. We reaped what we sowed. We sow wickedness and we got a wicked reward. We've been in captivity ever since. We haven't been back to our land as a nation, even though we have Israelites in the land, but not as a nation. And the scriptures prophesied that the Lord himself was going to bring us back. That's where you get the second deliverance, you know, in, in this place called spiritual Egypt. So right there, you want to know what's a strange wonder? Us being beamed up by a chariot, as it say in Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 2, the strangeness of our salvation. Also, we read about spiritual power, but can't nobody go back into a time machine to see what that really looked like. Isaiah 59 and 19 said that when the enemy come in like a flood, he's going to set a standard for them. When you go into that word standard, it, it goes into, or the, and the Hebrew word is nawas. When you go into that word, it, it talks about putting people to flight. So the Lord giving us spiritual power. It talks about being able to fly, disappear, all of that. Whatever the situation called for. Imagine that. Imagine that you got your little army coming to get um, a man of the Lord and he wiped you out. Remember the scriptures talks about how um, one can... Put flight a thousand and ten could put uh put flight ten thousand, you know. So yeah, that 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 strange works. Um, I'm quoting a lot of scriptures for it. This video don't be too long. So wisdom of Solomon five and seventeen, it talks about how he make the creature his weapon. That's a strange wonder right there. So all these, you know, super he super um superhero Marvel movies that you see, this is about to come to reality, man. So it says, raise up indignation and pour out wrath, take away the adversary and destroy the enemy. Sake the time short, remember the covenant and let them declare your wonderful, wonderful work. So when these heathens start to see it, that's when they're going to start respecting the Lord. That's when they're going to start respecting the men of the Lord. But until this time come, you're still going to be, you know, looked at as the filth of the world. Like we're the problem. We're out there preaching the Bible. No violence or anything like that. But they are really about to try to turn us to public enemy number one. How do we know that? Because it's in Revelation 12 and 11. It's in other places too. But Revelation 12 and 11 talks about the accuser of the brethren. So this devil is going to have a campaign of, of a slander campaign upon, um, upon the Hebrew Israelites. And then all the, you see how they got everybody's attention on Diddy? They could do the same thing with the Hebrew Israelites. And that's what they're going to do because the scripture, as it say in Isaiah 29 and 21, who make, you know, us an offender for a word. So it says, let him that escapeth be consumed by the rage of the fire and let them perish that oppress the people. Now, we all understand the ones who's in this truth. What's the end game of Babylon the Great, the place of our captivity? One of the main reasons why this place is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. But also the gods of Egypt is in this place, too. The gods of Babylon is in this place. So, you know, this is the melting pot of gods. Sodom, you must shared. You know, I shouldn't have to explain why this place is called Sodom. So. 
you know, the ones who uh, oppress us the most is Esau, Edom. Revelation 13 to 10, it said, he that leadeth in the captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed by the sword. This is the patience and the faith of the saints. So the patient and the faith of the saints are the elect of the Israelites. These other uh, Israelites out here who don't give a damn about the truth ain't thinking about rulership, sovereignty. They thinking about chasing the bag, the imaginary bag. As it's saying, Haggai, um, Haggai 1 and 6, a bag filled with holes. It's always something pop. It's always bills pop up. It's always something. Your car break down. Your furnace go out. Whatever the case may be, something happens. All right? Because we under curses. Every time that you think you got a couple extra dollars, something happens. Your children might need something. You know? So, um, it says, smite and sunder, uh, smite and sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathen. That say there is none other but we. And the main heathen that talks like that is Esau Edom. You can read that account in Isaiah 47 and 7. Said, uh, I should sit as a uh, I should not sit as a widow. I should not know the loss of children. You know? Matter of fact, let's get that real quick. I think it's Isaiah 47 and 7 and um 8. So it said, and you says, I should be a lady forever so that you did not lay these things to your heart. Neither did remember the later end of it. Therefore, hear now this. You thou you are given to pleasures that dwellest carelessly that says in your heart. I am and none else besides me. I should not sit as a widow. Neither shall I know the loss of kingdom so, I mean, of children. So you think that your kingdom is going to last forever and every ruler of that kingdom, like say the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Medes and Persians, the Greeks, the Romans, they all thought that their kingdom was going to last forever. But as I say in Second Ezra, um, nine and five, it says that everything in the world have a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. So uh, verse eleven: Gather all the tribes of Jacob. Why not gather all the nations that believe? <laughs> Gather all the tribes of Jacob together and inherit thou them as from the beginning. So when he delivered us out of Egypt, we had um, servants that came with us that was Hamites, but they wasn't being delivered to add to salvation, to inherit the land. Made servants. OK. Servants and maid servants, man. And people actually get confused about that mixed multitude that was just a, a prelude of what what is going to come it ain't just going to be israelites in the kingdom you're going to have nations that's going to be tributaries unto you servants unto you they're not going to have the status of the israelites so when the lord start bringing you know calamities to the earth we need mercy and even though we understand the scripture says that, you know, the Lord is going to deliver his elect. We don't know if we are part of the elect. We have to endure to the end. Oh, remember not against us, the former iniquities. Let your tender mercy speedily prevent us for we are brought very low. We are at the bottom. And then the ones who sold their soul of our people. You got nothing but destruction coming unto you. You don't have no hope. But for the ones that um that trust in the Lord, we've been brought very low. Especially the ones who know the truth, understand the status where we're supposed to be, and we ain't nowhere near it. And it said, Help us, O power of our salvation, for the glory of your name. That's why that name very important. See, the Lord is going to do it. Everything that he's going to do in his name. See, right now, as I got this um, phrase from the beloved elder out in um, Boston, um, Elder I'm Was, he said that we're rolling out the red carpet for Yahweh Shai. So I took it a little farther, and we are, because how do the world know what name this power is coming in? Through us. You got big organizations out there who don't preach the name. They say most high and Christ bless. All right. 
You got another group who use the name, but say you don't have to worship your Havashah, Sakari. Okay. And then you even have ISUPK who use the name, but they always sneak Christ up in there. So the ones who really use the name of Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem means in the name. That's how his name getting glorified before he come. I will consume you with the spirit of my mouth and destroy you with the brightness of my coming. Second Thessalonians 2 and 8. So it says, help us, O power of our salvation, for the glory of your name, and deliver us and purge away our sins for your name's sake. Wherefore should the heathen say, where is their power? All right. Come on, Lord, please don't allow these heathen, you know, to boast on us talking about where your power at. All right. Let him be known among the heathen. See, let him be known. Who is that? Yahweh in our sight by the revenging of the blood of your service, which is shed. All right. They've been shedding, you know, the blood of the saints since we got, since we got over here and we're going to have martyrs. Those who are in the truth who die in the name of the Lord. Let sign of the prisoner, the only ones who sign and crying from there before the abomination thereof, as you read in Ezekiel 9 and 4, are the elect. Put a mark upon them, the wah in the Hebrew, which means um, exemption from judgment. Come before you according to the greatness of your power. Preserve thou those that are appointed to die. Did the scripture say that we are um, sheep led to the slaughter? So this is the place of our captivity and where, our in, where the enemies rule over us. And even though we are in the Lord's hand, they still have the power to kill us. And that's why Yahweh said in uh, Matthew 10 and 28, fear not them that can kill the body, but not able to kill the spirit. So it says, and render unto our neighbors sevenfold into their bosom. And the beautiful thing about, you know, being put to death in the name of the Lord, the Lord delight in that. So that's why that's what I mean by like, you know, even though we are ultimately in the hands of the Lord, they still got the power to kill us because some of us is going to be put to death for this truth. But that's like a sweet, um, sweet sacrifice in the, in, in the, um, in, in, in a, um, good aroma in the uh, nose of our, of our Lord. So, you know, I also said that is a, um, there is no greater love than he that laid down his life for his friends. And the Lord called us his friend because he gave us the secrets. That's John 15, 13. So saying render unto our neighbors sevenfold into their bosom, their reproach wherewith they have reproached you, O Lord. So we, your people and sheep of your pasture will give thee thanks forever. We will show forth your praise to all generations. And that's where we're heading into. All right. Because our help is in matter of fact, let me get it. Our help is in the name of Yahweh who made head, heaven and earth. So this is the name that's about to be declared in the earth. Maybe just think of something. This is why the Lord do all this. He's about to have a grand entrance. So it says, what if the most high is willing to show his wrath to make his power known? Endure with much long suffering, long suffering, the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. All right. So the reason that we in captivity, because we got to understand we are in the Lord's movie. This is the way that the Lord movie um, he wanted to be played out. So the, the vessels of wrath, I mean, the vessels of um, wrath fitted to destruction. You know, we are the ones that are the vessels. All right. We are the ones that's long suffering. We are the ones like I uh, quoted earlier. You know, led to the sheep to the slaughter. So we are the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. But in that he make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. So, you know, we're basically about to head into right now. The devil got to come down with that great wrath. The Lord going to set up that standard. And some of us ain't going to taste death. And we also are the vessels of mercy, too. All right. The hell is bothering me? Hold on, hold on. It's a lock, you always getting bothered. But yeah, so you know, going from the mercy, uh, the long suffering vessels of wrath fitted to destruction and to the vessels of mercy. Because right now we are in a very low state, man. 
And the Lord said, be um, patient when you are changed to a lower state. So right now we patient wait for the Lord to come on our behalf. As I say in 2 Thessalonians 1 and 6, it said there is a righteous thing to recompense them that trouble you. So to end it on this. So when the Lord do show his wondrous works, the Lord gave us instruction to sit still, baby. Sit still. I gotcha. All right. I gotcha. So it said, be still and know that I am the most high. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. And we are, you know, it, it, it's a it's a um, privilege, a special privilege to be a part of, you know, making our Lord's name known in the earth. And to say, Yahweh of hosts is with us. All right. With us. The power of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. So all praises to Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai. Lord, please have mercy upon us. Matter of fact, I'm going to end it on this. Remember mercy. I think that's what it is. I think it's um, remember mercy when you do this. Oh, Yahweh, I have heard your speech and was afraid. Oh, Yahweh, re re revive your work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known in wrath. Remember mercy. So, yeah, man. We are not saved yet. We have to endure to the end. All right. So don't get faint hearted. Stay prayed up. All praises to Yahweh Bashim Shai and Shalom.